The bids are in, the gavels drop. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Wine Bid, we are finally hammered. That's right, this is Wine Bids podcast dedicated to all things wine value, wine retail, wine auctions, and just wine. My name is Jeff Kern on the Wine Bid marketing team. With me as always, the maestro of Merso. That's right, Paul Walker, <laughs> our wine expert. Thank you for joining us, Paul. Today, we're going to be talking about France and all the amazing French wines we have coming into auction this week. Let's just jump right into it because there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, we have a lot more U.S. wines coming to auction, but I feel like I have more French picks than U.S. picks <laughs> because there's a good amount of there's still a good amount of French wine coming to auction, but it's like really good stuff, right? So let me just start right off with we've got a couple of bids on um, some top tier first growth Bordeaux. The 05 Latour that we have, we have 10 bottles of 05 Latour. One has a bit. Uh, yeah, aren't there like multi bottle lots of it too or something? Yeah, it's like you know, multi bottle. Like, there's some yeah. multi bottle lots that you save a little bit if you buy like you buy three. There's a little there's a little deal on a couple of those. You save like five dollars a bottle or something <laughs> like that if you buy twelve at a time. But we've got like you know, those are going for 805, and we've got 10 of them at like 805, and then we've got just in case. You know, you're feeling really spendy. We have one bottle at nine fifty. In case you want to spend one hundred and forty five dollars more, that's up to you. <laughs> the O five Margot, we got five of those, and there's uh, actually a bid on at least one of them, and those are six eighty five. So some interest in the Margot again. You know, five great year for Bordeaux, so probably not surprising. These things have some bids. Eighty two Petrus, we've got for thirty one hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, and then here's what I thought was funny. So the 82 is thirty one hundred dollars. The fifteen Petrus is thirty four hundred dollars. Yeah. So you you get a deal if you get the eighty two <laughs> eighty two Petrus. You say three hundred. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it just sounds crazy to me. But I feel like if it were me, I'd probably save the three hundred dollars and get an eighty two Petrus. <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe you prefer your Merlot a little younger, so. In that case, you know, opt for the for the fifteen. Would you say fifteen? Fifteen, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. prefer, yeah, you will pay a premium to have younger Merlot. Uh, let's just say that eighty-five Lynch Bage, which I know you're very familiar with because you memorized all of Wine Spectator's top one hundred list, and this was number one in nineteen eighty-eight. Uh, no, no, it's interesting because I always disagreed with well. Some people's ideas about some of these wines. I think the eighty-eight is is just not as well appreciated as it should be, and you can see by the price that you know it's significantly less than the eighty-nine. Now the eighty-nine is probably like their greatest wine in the last fifty years, but eighty-eight, which is a hundred bucks less, if I'm not mistaken, almost two twenty-five, is phenomenal. The ninety, I was surprised, is three forty-five. I didn't even know the ninety was more than the eighty-nine. That's never been the case. So I don't know if that price got pushed up or something, but anyway, six of the eighty-nines in this week. That's the wine to get this week. And every time the eighty-nine comes up, it sells. But anyway, there's also seventy. And did you see that for two hundred? There's a different. Yeah, there's a bunch of Lynch Bosch. We've got eighty-five is good. I think the eighty-five is good. I just think that for the money, the eighty-eight. I mean, it's close. In price. It was. In it's 1988, the 1985 Lynch Bosch was the best tasting wine in the world. Well, Jeff, the problem is, is you, you're often just reading these critics' notes. You're not drinking enough of this wine. You got to drink more of it. That's what you got to do. Every day, you should have three wines open that you're, you know, that you're trying that you Boy, buy. In, in 1988, I was, like, I was like, I, I was like, no, no, no. been ten I'm years old, go, and you'd already been out of college for wines. ten years. Go get some of these wines and drink them. I know I was spoiled because when I was barely out of college, I had a buddy who collected. 80s Bordeaux and we started we were drinking them like well I don't want to say but at least 25 years ago I don't I don't have any friends that collect 80s Bordeaux okay I well, they, they bought them new they bought them new they weren't that expensive back then a Lynch Bosch 85 Lynch Bosch on release was probably twenty dollars maybe that's crazy that's yeah. crazy to me it was cheap we have a mag of the 86 leo of las cas uh yes i saw it mag and 750 a mag and 750 the mag has a bid it started at 690 if you want to 
get that. Oh gosh, yeah, it's already seven forty, huh? Already has a bid. Um, one of the things I thought was cool was a sixty-two to Ken for six hundred dollars. I thought that was a really neat. Yeah, really there's cool. a trio. There's sixty-one, yeah. sixty-two, and sixty-seven or seventy-one. Shoot, what yeah, it's like a seventy-one. Um, did yeah, Ken. seventy-one Magnum, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, there's the mag, but but just looking at like the tasting notes, it sounds like the 62 is really singing and it's a really cool bottle. Yeah, I mean 61, interesting because 61 I don't think was the greatest so turns vintage, like, like the red, you know, the dry reds from from Bordeaux, but it's funny, it's only it's only 10 bucks more than the 62. The 62 is considered to be a phenomenal, amazing wine. So I'm kind of curious about those price differences. But anyway, six hundred dollars for a 62 to Kemp, like I, it's I not just, a crazy number. It's not Kemp. a crazy number. Yeah, I mean, it's not. I mean, a magnum for the 71 at 1,030. That's I mean, that's it's a serious bottle, but that's very cool to see. A magnum from you know that's over 50 years old now super cool very very cool 82 pichon longville comtesse de la long yeah so there's another 82 there that pops up every so often there's a 59 in this week too which looks really cool the 82 is phenomenal 86 again this week i always push the 86s because they're so damn good and they're way less than the 82. yeah 620 for the 82 and by the way there are two bids on the 82s so uh, yeah, I mean it's it's legendary wine for sure. It's Parker Hundred or whatever, but hey, eighty six two fifty, not bad. We've got uh, some other stuff. I've got my eye on uh, eighty nine Montrose. We've got two of those at four fifty five. Yeah. Um, I was wondering about that because there's eighty two in also this week. Yes, and then the eighty nine is like getting up there, just like the ninety. It's you know it's. Just, it's just, it just keeps going up. It's crazy. So we'll see I, where the camera is. Do these wines no no ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> and and I mean, you and I were just talking about it. it's like the Montrose, like it ages really well. Like I had I yeah. had some Montrose, like 30, 40 year old Montrose that's oh, just yeah. outstanding. I was telling Paul, like I had, you know, for a friend's birthday, I bought some eight, uh, 78 Montrose. It was unbelievably good. Oh, do you see the three liter of 16 Alter Ego for $400? Yeah, I did. There's a, it's funny. There's like a smattering of three liters in this week. And there's both 15 and 16, actually. Both yes. for 400 bucks. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, first of all, I was just thinking to myself, like, $400 doesn't seem crazy to me for that, right? Like, that seems like a pretty good deal for Alter Ego. And what a cool party bottle. Yeah. <laughs> 16 is just such a great, you know, great year. And then you can get the 15 at $400 for the 15 OWC. Out yeah. of three, on the three liter for 400. So if right. you want, you know, if, if, if you're okay, if you want the 15, you know, I'd grab the OWC one and then you get case and kind of a cool little memento to have, unless, you know, you're Paul Walker and you're just like, oh, I've got all these three liter first growth Bordeaux cases all over <laughs> my house. Right. He, he like, yeah, he like uses them to take out the trash and stuff. That's what Paul does with his alter ego cases. There's an alter ego joke in there somewhere, but there's uh, gotta be an all there's gotta be an ego joke. Three <laughs> bottles of the O1 Angelus uh for 400 a piece. And then I thought was cool was the 95 Clinet. We've got six of those for one. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. I saw that too. 95. You know, it's still Clinet, I think is still I hate to say this, but it seems underpriced at auction. I was just I was just gonna say that. Yeah, like Clinet seems it's neighbors. What was the vintage we were looking at that was under a hundred bucks? I think it was like the 15 or the 16 or something. It was like 79 or 80. Yeah, it was like it was like 15 or, or 16 or something. It's just like I feel like every time I see Clinet come up, just if you base it purely on the quality of the juice, considering it's you know right bank porto, it just always seems so incredibly reasonably priced. Yeah, it does. To every it, yeah, no, it's and ninety five is it's very good. It's very very good. I had cool. that's about a couple of years, but it was phenomenal last time I had it. And you can get um, if you buy the three bottle lot, you save fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See another one of those deals. Uh, you know me; I'm all about the saving. It's it, yeah. this is our, it's our Costco price. 
right there. <laughs> if you buy in bulk, we're going to give you five dollars <laughs> off of that of that clinic per bottle. Oh, one Riasac. We've got six of them. One of them already has a bid at one thirty five. I still you always think, talk about that wine because again, I think you're looking at the scores. I'm looking. No, I'm not looking at scores. I like Riasac. Oh, one's a great year. I was actually just going to say I still think that's expensive when you compare it to other. No, it's because of the, scores, the scores, the scores, the scores, it's the scores. scores. Oh, nine do Hard Milan Roth Shield. Uh, we've got four of those at 110. I didn't think that was a terrible deal. And then 2015, this one I might actually buy. 2015 Mouscott Scenic Supre uh yeah. Peter for and 260. Yeah, I saw that. That's a, it seems to be that's one of those, again, I hate to say it, but underpriced wines from that vintage. Cause I mean, yeah. you're looking at $65 per 750 milliliter. Well, yeah, there are a bunch of 750s too, right? Like, and there are, yeah, I think there are. Yeah. Of, I mean, I just, I feel like Moscow Super Chay, Sink Super A is, I feel like there's tremendous value. Yeah. Plane, Ron LaRose, like they just, for some reason, and I don't know why, because I think the juice is good, people overlook the, you know, a, a few Bordeaux producers. And no, yeah, it's true. Like, like you're looking at um the 16 yeah 16 is 65 so yeah yeah and six that's a great deal too i mean dude the 18 is 135 so you're paying 135 for the 18 or you can grab the 16 for for less than half right right you know actually i was going to say oh it's the scores but if you look at the scores they're pretty they're comparable on the 18 versus the 16 yeah, I mean, that's... And the 15, 15, 16, 18. Well, you know, the 18, course. yeah, and the 18 price is, is customized. It's it Last hammer was actually 55 in the 18, so that, that price is a little inflated. But you think? anyway, it's, yeah, it's still... And we've got a mag at 130 and two 750s at 65 and, and 70. And then we've got, an, the the last one I had for Bordeaux was an 05 Tropelong Mundo. Uh, we have six of those at 235. I thought that was interesting. What do you yeah. got? Yeah, no, I noticed there was 09 in at 130, which I think is a much better deal, actually, for Tron. Yeah, so, uh, yeah I, I agree with that. I mean, I think the 05 is just based off of what the scores and the strength of the vintage. Right, right, exactly. So, yeah, no, I mean, you you mentioned all the the things I think that stuck out to me. 05 Sertan and May, I saw that. It was a half case of that, 115 each. 70 shovel blog 445 01 585 and then there's a six pack of 08 shovel blog for 2580 those stuck out to me also there's some cure one which doesn't come in seems like it doesn't hit the us as much or maybe the west coast i don't know you don't see it as much smaller smaller producer in margot anyway 98 is 55 Two thousands at eighty, eight oh threes at eighty, and oh sevens at forty five. So I, I've always kind of interested in that wine because it's I don't know maybe it's just because it's rare in the U.S. But uh, sixty two emission at five hundred saw that two thousand Latour Aubryon this week, which is kind of hard to find. Uh, One ten eighty one Lafitte and looks really really good shape. That's a great wine from that vintage. Uh, Four seventy five. 88 La Motte Guignard, uh, speaking of more interesting Sauternes as far as I'm concerned, because I still think there's tremendous value. And that's $21 for that half bottle of 88, which is a phenomenal vintage. And yeah, I think we talked about most. Yeah, there's 15 Margot six pack. And there's also a three, three liter, which I thought was really cool. The 15, 85 Mouton popped in this week, 510. That's really really good wine yeah that was that was pretty much most of my <coughs> excuse me most of my picks you mentioned the Petrus was pretty cool that we had both 82 and 2015 yeah i think i think that was pretty much it let's have a burgundy All yeah right. yeah i'm just gonna jump right into it 18 yeah. comte de vosges uh moussini Villavine, two bids on it for and it's 2018 two bids taking it from 585 to 685 so that one is, I mean, it's Comte de Vosges. So, of course, it's getting, you know, bids. Getting 05. What's that? Getting some action. Yeah. Getting some action. 
Oh, uh, five, Bouchard, Pierre, Phil, Volney, uh, Talapide. Uh, we have three of those at 80. Um, and 18, uh, Domaine, Georges, Rumier, Chambois, Moussini for 425. I thought I, I've got my eye on this Henri, Boileau, Puni, Montrachet, Claw, De La Mouche. Uh, Mouche. Uh, again, already has action. Two bids have taken it from 155 to 195. Pierre, uh, Yves, Colin Moray, uh, Rosé de Pinot Noir. I thought that one was really interesting, right? <laughs> to see some Rosé de Pinot Noir from them. Also, two bids has gone from 40 to 52. This one, I feel like we don't see a lot of Rosé de Pinot Noir from Burgundy, particularly from producer like this. In fact, the last time we saw from this bottle was in 2020. That was actually the only other time we saw this bottle, probably not I think. But yeah, it's it's also, you know, that's about as cheap as you're gonna get for Colin Murray. So <laughs> well, <laughs> well, and, and actually it may not even be that cheap. <laughs> it no, it's not <laughs> cheap for Rosé, that's for sure. But it's, it, yeah, it's, it's great. Not, it's it's great not cheap for Rose. It's not yeah. cheap for Rose. We've got this 2013 Alain Alain Houdelo uh Nola. Claude de Rougeau for 175. 16 people are keeping an eye on that one. Some 15. Arnaud Lachaud, Von Romany, Les Chalms for 390. We've got three of those. 2010 Domaine Perot, Mino, Chambertin, Claude de Bez, Villavine uh, has a bit on it, uh, taking it from 385 to 405. I thought was, this was interesting. Have you heard of Evening Land Vineyards? Yes. I already mentioned these wines in our California uh, edition. Well, this is not made in California. Edition. This is Evening Land Vineyard and Chevrolet Chambertine. No, no, it's good. They make a number of wines from both Burgundy and Beaujolais. In fact, I don't know if they still do. But yeah, they're good. They're good. And then we've got this Domain um, Arno Charm Chambert. Uh, sorry, Domain Arlo. Uh, 2013 Charm Charms Chambertine, uh, which has a bit on a team from 120 to 130. 13 Albert Bichot, uh, Domaine Duclos, Frontine, Claude de Vougeot. Uh, we got three of those at 160. Uh, 01 Comte, Armand, Palmard, uh, Claude de uh, Epineau for 145. And then 18 Domaine, Hubert, Lame, Saint Aubin, uh, Derrier, Chaise, Edouard, Edouard, with uh, two bids, they were 75 to 70. Behind Edward's house. Yeah, that's true. What I miss. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what I was telling you? I was talking to you earlier. You were mentioning some wines and that Comte Armand is exactly the Pomard I was talking about. And Epino, the Claude Epino is great. So anyway, keep that in mind, Jeff. Oh, I will. <laughs> I will. Because uh, we, we were just like randomly chatting about. I was right. I was, and I was I, like, I, hey, I occasionally I'll, Pilar, I'll, let's get it. Get this I'll, stuff. It's great. Occasionally I'll find stuff. If I don't know anything about it, I'll ask Paul because Paul is the wine expert. So yeah, Paul that's, always... Everyone has to <laughs> you say that at the beginning of every episode and it is far from true. Do uh, I know? I don't okay. remember. It goes so fast. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I, we got to hurry because we're rapidly running out of time. But yeah, no, you touched on some of the things. I think, I don't know if you mentioned the Bachelet Old Vines 05, Chauvet Chamberton. Love those wines. Great vintage. There's a Producer I'd never heard of, which I thought was kind of interesting. Charles Alexon, A L L E X A N T. What? I, I just want to point out that you are absolutely right there. It is very interesting and very rare that there's a producer you've never heard of. Please continue because you're one <laughs> expert. You've heard of all the producers. You know, yeah, how to, not so it's very, it's far very rare. From it. if, if very rare. I'm not even an expert at it. sorting my own list because that's what I've been trying to do for like the last half hour and I'm terrible. I don't even know where these wines come from. Anyway, let's see. Domaine de la Tour, Chablis, uh, Montman. There's a mag of the 18, which I thought was a great deal at 50 bucks. Um, there's some Denis Ross, Chablis, Montman also. Same vineyard, different producer. 14 at $26. A pretty, pretty great deal there. My favorite. Bone producer, Domain, we were also talking about this, Domaine Dequa, Les Sanguines, 09, stuff is phenomenal. There's some Duran La Rose, uh, various Grand Cru, there's Bon Mar, Chapelle Chamartin, six, uh, 06 and 18, uh, 06 Clovijo Magnum, which is pretty cool, at 180 bucks, not terribly expensive. These wines are fairly reasonable. 
some Francois Lamarche wines, 15 Echezo, and uh, let's see, 14 Grands Echezo. There's a trio of Hubert Lamy Saint Vans, which are awesome. Uh, 13s, let's see, 213, Claude de Chatiner, Old Vines, and 18. I think you mentioned this one actually, the sentiment derrière chez Edouard, behind chez, behind Edward's house. And the 18 is actually quite a bit less than the than the Claude Chatiner, probably not as well respected. Anyway, uh, yeah, and that kind of rounds out the yeah, the evening evening lands wines caught my eyes as well. The Jevray Premier Cru and then the Puy Fuisse 11, which is kind of interesting. You don't see those all the time. Favely Charm 16, just a couple of bottles of that for 130. Didn't seem to be too steep. 05, uh, Favely Nuit Saint Georges Le Vignon, also a couple, a couple of bottles. Bids at 56. Uh, 12, Jean Marc Pio, Chassagne Verger at 86. A um, couple Jeudeau Grand Cru's, 09, Bon Mar. 275 and 15 Claude La Roche at 200. Yeah, and you mentioned I think the Dangerie from Ye 17. And then there's some I, Michel Lafarge wines. No, I did not mention the Dangerie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mentioned it to you, but I didn't mention it on the podcast because I was thinking about bidding on it. <laughs> yeah, better, better hurry. I really like Dangerie. <laughs> yeah, Dangerie wines. I mean, yeah, I, I those are great. And also Lafarge, one of my favorite. Full name producers for sure. Multiple bottles. Well, there's the Bourgogne and the Passe du Grand, and then the Aligoté Raison Doré, which is inexpensive as it should be. It's Aligoté, it's nothing too crazy. But then there's also Cote de Beaumillage 17 and Lafarge uh, Clos de Chateau de Duc uh, 11. Tricky vintage, but I'm sure if it's Lafarge, it's very good. There's 67 Momassin Clos de La Roche, which caught my eye as well. That was pretty interesting. That's a rare one for sure. Not something you'd be able to to replace or find very easily. Yeah, and I think I think that actually rounds it out. That's pretty much it. Then let's really quickly go through the rest of France. Are you ready? Because there's not too much. But um, yeah, yeah. from Alsace, there's a 92s in Umbrich Riesling, Herrenweg de Turkheim, uh, Ville Vin for $65. I thought that was an interesting deal. You know, 31 years of age on that Riesling. I'll bet you that's just singing right now. $65 doesn't seem crazy to me. What I thought was fascinating was this 08 Trimbach Riesling Claw St. Hune three bottle lot OWC for $900. So you're looking at 300 bucks a bottle. Well, OWC. We just mentioned the 2000 hammered for what? What was I? Was it three or was it more? It was, remember. it was pretty high. Yeah, right? it was at least 300. Three something. So, so that's, it's not out of line, right? And then I'm going to uh, go straight over to Champagne, where we've got 89 Krug Brut for 800. I thought that was kind of a cool bottle to see, like a really long age Krug. I know you're not a big fan of this, but I wanted to bring it up because already has a bit. Uh, the multi vintage Moet Chandon White Star. We've got a bottle of White Star for ninety bucks. Well, ninety one now. I actually have some. I I have a bottle of White Star that somebody Wait, brought me like twenty years ago, and I still have it. Why is it so expensive? I don't know. Well, wasn't it? It was made for the cruise line originally, right? Ninety one dollars. <laughs> no, it's got to be because it's old. There's that's it's an older. Reason. It's got to be. An, I think it's an older bottle of White Star. Yeah, because that's totally bizarre that's very strange yeah and it's very cheap it's like very inexpensive so anyway that's what well, we have we have more we have two bottles of white star at auction <laughs> both of them are at 90 or at 90 bucks but this one does look like a much older bottle of white star that is bizarre so anyway 2010 perry jouet fleur de champagne cuvee belle epoque brut rosé has three bids taken from 160 to 181 so a lot of interest in that. 08, Cedric Bouchard, Brut Blanc de Noir in Florence, Val uh, Villene uh, for 350. 15 people watching that. Even more people are watching. Uh, we've got 17 people watching this 08, Tad and Jay Comte de Champagne Blanc de Blanc with one bid taking from 225 to 235. Obviously, 08, epic vintage in, in Champagne. This uh, multi-vintage or non-vintage Guillaume Salas Extra Brut uh, Ville sur Arce uh, L'Argile for 490 and 
Actually, this one I thought was interesting. A 1996 Lanson gold label brute for 130 bucks. We have at auction. And then we've got some action on this uh, multi-vintage or non-vintage Henri Giraud Foot de Chain, uh, one bottle lot OWC. That's our OCC, original cardboard case for two bids taking it from 170 to 190. And then a 71 Julien Housset Brut Epernay Cuvée Reserve uh, for 310. What did I miss, Paul? Uh, yeah, you touched on a lot of things. There's some Georges Laval, there's some Jerome Prevost. And again, this week, I'm um, always a big fan of those wines. There's like Lepar Cuvée Last as well from 13. Clocazal. Yeah, there's a lot of really nice champagne this week, actually. That Valvulen 08, that doesn't make any sense. That's a lot because the Valvulen was traditionally Bouchard's lesser. It was like the entry level wine, but man, that is crazy. It's, I mean, it's been out for obviously 13 years now. So, or I don't know, probably 12 or 13 or 10 years or something. So it's, that's a pretty rare one, but it's, whew, that's a lot because the vintage, well, the 16th Valvulin also, but anyway, Cedric Burchard just people go crazy for it. It's it's great stuff. Yeah, there's some Bresh wines in the Reflet d'Anton, which is interesting because some of them are kind of in the oxidative style and the other ones are not. So <laughs> depending depending on what you get, there is a little bit of variation with those. And there's also a couple of different lots of those. There's some Mutar in this week. Let's see, where's the other Bresh wines I wanted to see? Because they're they're listed as Raphael and Vanset Bresh. Anyway, the growing looks like the 40 months in cave disgorged 216 to, in 2016 is fairly reasonable. It's at $91. Whereas the 99 per recruit montagne is at 190. So and some Runar, some Tanger, Comte. Yeah, a lot of great champagnes this week. If you like Jean Bordy, boy, do we have a bunch of new Jean Bordy from Jura. We've got the Coupe de Jura Galant de. Des Abesses. We've got the Cote du Jura Blanc. <laughs> yeah, Cote du Jura. Yeah, Rouge. Is what is this stuff? Is this? Uh, it's I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's all in Jura. It's hard. No, it looks actually. It's weird. It's got a red wax capsule, but it looks like a white wine, which is interesting. It's probably Sauvignon, anyway. So we've got, you know, we've got some interesting stuff at auction this week. Anyway, this I think is that- really interesting, actually. This Galone is the best you mentioned. I didn't know this was an auction. It's actually not. This is this is a liqueur. It's or it's fortified. And I can't really tell by the label, but it looks like it's 18 percent. That's really cool. That's really interesting. And there's two of them. Huh? Yes. Oh, I got to look, read up more of that. That's pretty wild. There's some really interesting stuff. I was looking at some of the Cote de Jura Blancs and stuff, and a lot of these already have bids, right? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of these already have bids, but they're not expensive. Yeah. They're not expensive. I mean, what if I want is this most expensive? We get some Jura wines that come in and get a ton of bids and are super expensive. But I think these are very reasonable. Anyway, that just about wraps up our what's coming to auction from France. With WineBid, this has been Paul Walker and Jeff McGurn wishing you happy bidding and cheers. Cheers.